From start to finish, I'm going to take you through all the steps I took to create this wood to epoxy lamp. I'll even show you how to wire this up, leaving you with a professional looking finish. With this design, you'll be able to replace any component that fell. Any piece of wood could work for this project. I have a piece of mahogany which I'm going to cut into a few strips. Now that I have the strips cut, I'll use them to form the lamp. This should give me a general size. You can make these as thin as you like. I was pretty confident that I could break these with the hammer. All right, so my first try was a pretty ugly break. After bringing the supporting blocks closer together, I got a nicer break. Another approach here is you can use a saw to score the other side of the wood that you're hitting. That saw mark would be a general breaking point. I left one row which is meant to be the back untouched. I'm liking the way I have this laid out, so now I'll apply some wood glue. I'm gonna let this sit and let the glue dry. Finally, I trimmed off the extended ends on the miter saw. Now I'll lightly sand this and prepare it for the mold. I wanted to experiment with an old bulb that was blown. The idea I had was to remove the threaded section on the bulb. I thought the concept was a good idea, but ultimately it failed. My next step was to drill a hole from the bottom of the lamp and carry it all the way through. I was hoping I could place this in the hole and use hot glue to seal it up. I looked through my cutoff bin and found some parts that I could use to make the mold. For the size of the mold, I use melamine. Now this is completely optional. I would also recommend using melamine for the side. Instead, I ended up using a piece of plexiglass to sort of give a visual of the pour. To not split the melamine while drilling, it's always best to drill a pilot hole first. At the time, I didn't have the sheathing tape, which is what a lot of people use for epoxy. I ended up using some packing tape here. I'm not sure how well it worked, but it was all I had, and I do recommend using the sheathing tape. Next, I'll put the bottom on and screw it on with a few screws. And while this is all set, I'll go ahead and mix up some epoxy. Not having a lot of experience with epoxy, I think the best way for people to learn is to just get some and use it. Follow the instructions and see how well you make out with it. Once I have the resin completely mixed, I then add some dye to it. I'm using a cast in resin and you really have to be careful depending on how thick of a pour you need. It all depends on the brand of the epoxy, but in some cases you can pour things up to 2 inch thick. The main reason I use this plexi panel is to give a visual on the inside. Up until this point, everything was going great. When I got ready to move this out the way, I must have flexed this and it sprung a leak. Much of this could have been avoided had I used silicone inside the corners of the mold. Well, I swapped the bottom out for a piece of melamine and that seemed to do the trick. After giving this a few days to harden, it's time to remove the mold.
It took some effort to get it out of the mold, but here it is. As you can see, the resin filled up majority of the hole that I previously drilled, but that's okay. We'll work around that. At this point, I was contemplating whether or not to sand the epoxy down to the wood. It was either that or pouring another layer. I ultimately decided to sand off the thin layer of resin. I used the native grit sandpaper to strip off the layer. After sanding, I re-drilled the hole in the bottom, but I ended up making it a bit deeper than it was. After I get the hole to the depth that I need, I drill a couple more holes for the following components. I'll be using this little LED bulb. I'll link it down in the video description. The lamp will be powered with this DC power port and controlled with this simple on and off power switch. This switch has a little tab on the side which I ended up filing off so it can fit a 3 quarter inch hole perfectly. Here's a quick visual to give you a sense of how deep the hole is. The thought here is to get the bulb high enough so it's not blocked by the sides. Before drilling the holes, I'll mark off where I want the switch and the power port to be. I placed them where I felt they would be most pleasing to the eye. To me, it made more sense to put the power port at the bottom and the switch at the top. Now that I have the holes drilled, it's going to be a lot of sanding from here on out. When I first sanded this down, I kicked it off with 80 grit sandpaper. Now I'll restart the sanding with the 120 grit. I'm going to start off a little slow with this one and spend a little more time on each side. As I go up in the number of sandpaper grit, I'll spend less time sanding. I started off with 80 grit sandpaper and I finished off at 10,000. 10,000 is an overkill but you can see how glossy everything looks. I wasn't sure how well stain would work on a piece sanded this smooth, but I know Danish oil does a really good job when it comes to soaking into wood. I'll just do one coat of this and then I'll give it enough time for it to dry. Alright, so let's get this thing wired up. First, I'll take this wire harness, pass one leg up through to the switch, then take the remaining leg and pass it up to the power port. Now I'll take a jumper wire, put one leg to the switch and one leg to the power port. The metal prong on the port had a hole in it, so I'll twist the wire and pass the wire through. The color of wire doesn't matter, even though I pulled a green one through, I'll just remove the green and bring a white one through for clarity. Now I'll take that white jumper wire and pass it through the hole on the power port. Finally, I solder the wire on to make sure I have a solid connection. I hook the black wire up to the negative prong on the port and the white wire up to the positive prong. Moving to the hole for the switch, I have two white wires here. I'll be using the switch to interrupt the steady flow of power going to the light bulb. Before soldering, it's probably worth testing the circuit first. If you've made the connection and you notice your symbol is in the wrong direction, you can always just undo it and reverse it. Now that I'm confident the components work, I can push them down into the lamp. As far as the bulb, I'll push it all the way up. The wire harness is quite stiff so it should be strong enough to keep the bulb up in place. I needed a solution to close up the bottom. Two things popped into my mind. Now you can go with either or or both. The first idea I had was to just plug the hole. Just in case something fell, you can get back into it. For that, I use a piece of rubber stripping I had on hand. But you can use foam or anything else. Maybe a piggy bank plug will work. 
The next solution I had was to close off the entire bottom. And with this, I decided to use a large iron-on edge band. If you can find a thin felt pad, I would recommend going with that. Here are the components I use for the light, and I'll link these down in the video description. This is meant to be clean and simple. To power this lamp, all you need is a 12 volt power source. Just flip that power switch and you have light. With this being a 12 volt port, you can power it from a power bank or a wall plug. Not only can you enjoy a nice glow from this lamp, but you can position it so you can turn the light away from you and give a little light to your desk if you want to work with the lights off. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and make sure you turn on your bell notification so you get notified when I post a new video.